let's go through some class notes for hypothesis testing and I'll briefly look at the conditions that are mentioned at the top of the page. Uh, there, the formula is listed there. The z-test statistic is x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n. That sigma over square root of n part is sometimes called the standard error, the standard error of the estimate, the standard deviation of the estimate, the standard error of the statistic, or sigma sub x bar. There are four conditions that are listed there. The sample needs to be an SRS or something kind of like an SRS. This is pretty important. The, number two, we either need the data to come from a normal population or from a large sample, in which case the central limit theorem will suffice as to getting it close to normal for the sampling distribution. Number three, we have to dose sigma. And then the fourth one there says we don't want to sample more than 10% of the population. And as long as we've done that, sigma over square root of n is a pretty good estimate for the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Looking at the first question, or the first uh, problem, it says the sociologist claims the average age at which a woman, woman gives birth is 21.7 years with sigma of 4.6 years. We've got 100, record, 100 birth records, and so I'm going to write this stuff down. Sigma is 4.6, n is 100 x bar is 20.3. The claim here is that mu is 21.7. We want to know if we should reject that claim. In this case, I think I'll go with a two-sided test, which means that my picture will have 21.7 in the middle. The standard deviation is 4.6 divided by the square root of 100. And since it's a two-sided test, I'll shade here and here. This value occurs at 20.3, my x bar. And then I notice that that is 1.4 below the mean. From 20.3 to 21.7 is a distance of 1.4. So if I go another 1.4 up, this will be 23.1. Now, I need a few conditions to be met. And these weren't really addressed in the problem, so I hope the data is like an SRS. My large sample allows me to use a normal sampling distribution. And of course, I know sigma that's listed over there on the side of 4.6. So now as I work it out, I want to know what's the probability I would get an x bar less than 20.3 or an x bar greater than 23.1. Since those regions are the same, this is essentially two times getting an x bar less than 20.3. So now I'll standardize this. And hopefully this process that I'm doing now, the mathematics, is familiar enough to you where you're fairly speedy at it. Type this into your calculator. Uh, you're going to get negative 3.04. You can trust me now, but you should verify later, as President Reagan used to say, trust but verify. And that area right there is 0 .001169. So when I double that, I get 0 0.0023. That value right there is called a p-value. That's the probability that I would get an answer as extreme as the one I got if HO is true. Or contextually, it's the probability that I would get an answer like 20.3 or more extreme if 21.7 is true. Now they told me up here in the problem I have a 1% level of significance. That's actually alpha. I could write that over here. That's the burden of proof I need. So now for my conclusion, I'll write since my p-value is less than alpha, or in other words, 0 0.0023 is less than 0 0.01, I will reject HO in favor of HA. That is, I no longer believe 
Now I put it in context. The true average age at which a mother gives birth is 21.7, but that it is something different. If you need to pause the video so you can catch up and write, of course, feel free to do that. Example three, I don't know where example two went, it disappeared. For many semesters, an instructor has recorded his students' grades and has found that the mean grade for all these classes is 72 with sigma 12. The current class of 37 students seems to be better than average in their ability and he wants to know if this class is superior. Does this average prevent sufficient evidence at the 5% significance level? So my givens, he posits that mu is 72 and HA is my class better. Now a trick here is defining mu. I know that in the past the mean was 72. The question is, is this class 72 or is this class better than 72? So where mu is the true average for these current students. And so the rest of my givens, sigma is 12, n is 37, x bar is 75.2, alpha is 0.05. Of course, I want to draw a picture, and as soon as I draw a picture, I'm reminded that I need to check normality in my conditions. So I'll do that momentarily. Mean of 72, standard deviation of 12 divided by the square root of 37. We're going to shade a one-sided test of 75.2 or greater. So here are my conditions. I hope the students are like an SRS or perhaps or perhaps that their grades are like a random sample. Their grades are like an SRS of their ability, and that may be more reasonable. Since N is only 37, really 40 is better, but since n is only 37, I am okay as long as the population distribution isn't too non-normal. That's really all the hard part. The rest of this stuff that we're going to do is sort of just mechanical at this point. So let's say here, what's the probability I get an X bar bigger than 75.2? Okay, fine. Now let's standardize it. That's Z bigger than 75.2 minus 72 over 12 divided by the square root of 37. Again, if this stuff is going too fast, pause it. Plug the numbers in your calculator. Look on your pink chart or plug this in your calculator, and that's my p-value. Now I want to compare my p-value to alpha. In this case, my p-value is bigger than alpha. Since my p-value is bigger than alpha, and let's go ahead and put it on here. 0 0.0524 is bigger than 0 0.05. I 
fail to reject HO. I want to keep believing HO. Therefore, I do not have enough evidence to stop believing this class is the same as previous classes. Again, that doesn't mean that this class isn't superior. It just means that the evidence is insufficient for me to quit believing they're just like every other group. All right, let's look at number four. Uh-oh, change that word to Coke. A cokery distributes Coke in bottles labeled 32 ounces. The local Bureau of Weights and Measures randomly selects 50 of these bottles, weighs their contents, obtains a sample mean of 31 ounces, and it's known that sigma is 0.75. Can we conclude that the brewery is cheating customers? All right, so here we go. HO is the true mean 32 or is the true mean less than 32 because it says they're cheating where mu is the true average volume in the bottles the givens that I have here are that n is 50 X bar is 31.0, sigma is 0.75, and that alpha is 0.01. Notice on this problem that we've got a little bit higher level of significance or a little bit tougher level than we had on the previous problem. That's because if we're going to say that this company is cheating people, we want to be pretty certain about it. Just a professor curious if this class is better, maybe the standard doesn't have to be so tough. Notice that a smaller level of significance is tougher to prove. I, I'm glad to see that these are randomly selected. I hope it's like an SRS. Remember, there's other ways to randomly select. And my sample is large. Some of you may want to put on here, how large is it? N is 50. So the distribution should be close to normal. In fact, this one could really be close to normal because repeated measurements of the same thing are also thought to be normal. So the population might be normal on this one as well. I'm going to draw a curve. Center of the curve, of course, is at 32. I'm going to draw the one-sided test, less than. 31 is my x bar. The standard deviation is 0.75 divided by the square root of 50. Some of you guys will prefer to work that out and actually write whatever that is there. That's not usually the way I do it. And then I'm looking for x bars less than 31. How likely is that? So that's the probability that I would get a Z of 31 minus 32 over 0.75 divided by the square root of 50. When I work this out, I get a Z test statistic of negative 9.43. Some of you guys might wig out a little bit. Oh, it's not on my chart. Well, that's because my p-value is approximately zero. It's very, very, very small. You could also write that p-value is less than 0 0.0002 or whatever the smallest thing is there on your chart. It's really small. Okay, way off the limits there. Meaning it's nearly impossible to get a sample like I got if the truth is 32. Therefore, since my p-value is so small, I mean, it's tiny. Zero is less than, in fact, it's way less than uh, 0 0.01. I will reject HO 
in favor of HA. I now believe the bottles contain less than 32 ounces on average. There it is. And we've got one more question right here, so let's check this one out. Oh, this one's about a cola drink. It's supposed to contain 300 milliliters. We don't think the machine's doing right. We've got a normal distribution with that standard deviation, that N, that X bar. Do we think that the bottles are underfilled? So HO, it's very similar to the previous question. Now we're on milliliters. After you kind of get the hang of this, they become very similar. That's why I'm not giving a lot of discussion about this. A lot of this, once you start writing down the givens, it ought to just kind of flow for you. The trick, of course, is to remember all the different steps that we want to see. Um, I notice the population is approximately normal. Actually, it is normal, is normal. And I hope the bottles are from an SRS. So there's my conditions. Of course, I've written sigma as 3 over there, so I'm good on that one. The work, what's the probability that I would get an X bar less than 298? So what's the probability? Z is less than 298 minus 300 over 3 divided by the square root of 30. So what's the probability? Z is less than, in this case, it's negative 3.65. And that turns out to be a p-value, if you use your calculator, of 0.00013304. If you're using your pink chart, you would just write p is less than 0.0002. The z-test statistic, let me go through a couple of things real quick. The z-test statistic is negative 3.65. The p-value is 0 0.0001304. The standard error is 3 over the square root of 30. The statistic is 298. The parameter is 300. My p-value pretty small. This problem didn't give me an alpha level, so we just kind of make one up. What do you think about that p-value? I'm going to say that's a really small p-value. Since my p-value is so small, p is 0 0.00013, I will reject HO in favor of HA. I no longer believe the true volume in the bottles, this is where I'm putting it in context, is 300 millimeters, but I now think it is something less. I have a hard time with that 300 millimeters there. There we go. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of the expectations on significance tests for means.